What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and today we're gonna watch the entire first season of the Halo TV show and see how long it takes us to throw up. All right, so let's uh, get my puke buckets, and uh, we got the show ready, and let's get started. Oh God! Please, someone, please, someone, save us from the. It's, it's you. With the Super Mario Bros. movie officially blowing the doors down breaking all sorts of records for all animated movies hitting that one billion dollars in the box office i thought popped up in my mind for all these years gaming tv shows and movies have been destined to fail over the releases of the last of us tv show the schumacher bros movie arcane and edge runners is the curse finally broken why are there always those game adaptations that are literally that is one big pile of shit while others are just straight up perfection. And what is the secret sauce that allows for these shows and movies to not just straight up suck ass? Let's jump into it. What's up guys? I am proud to announce that we are now officially affiliated with Rogue Energy. They sent over two shakers as well as many different flavor combinations to try. And I gotta say, I really love them. I've been a fan of the many different types of combinations of flavoring that you can get. My favorites so far have been Blood Orange and Dragon Fruit Mango. They're used for both energy and hydration, so if you need a boost when playing video games, when you're working out, or just doing content creation, this is just for you. If you use the link below and using the code MARSMAN with two Zs, you get 10% off your order. MARSMAN Gaming is powered by Rogue Energy. Before we jump into this crap-filled rabbit hole, we have to analyze the history of the game adaptation. One of the biggest growing trends globally is the popularity of gaming over the past few decades. So it only makes sense that the, since the beginning that there would be some game directors that would try to get their hands on these gaming IPs and bring it into cinema. The first ever game adaptation was back in 1989 with the Super Mario Brothers Super Show by, you guessed it, Lou Albano as Mario. And since then, game adaptations have been utter crap with either bad characters, bad narratives, or a gross ass atmosphere in which they're all gonna be written into. With all these shows and films literally flopping in every way, there was actually seemed to be a sort of curse that had invested into these productions, stopping them from being actually good. And pretty much the stats backed up that entire statement. Up until this point, there have only been three films entirely that have reached that 50 and over on IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, and Metacritic. And those are Mortal Kombat 1995, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, and Detective Pikachu. And in a previous video, I actually had analyzed whether or not that these game adaptations are destined to fail. I always felt that game adaptations can save themselves if they can land on two of the three major categories of all films and TV shows. Good writing for its characters to keep it consistent to the games, a narrative that follows the IP closely or at least in some way, or creating an atmosphere that can mirror the games that at least can help the fans recognize it and enjoy it along the way. So it's up to me to break down whether this new wave of media has actually broken the curse and where did some movies and films succeed while others just crap themselves. Let's first talk about one of the most important aspects of these films and movies, and that is the writing of the characters. Are they written well? Are they similar to the games that we know and love? The first battle of this debate is going to be between Ellie and Joel versus the Halo show's Master Chief, or should I call him, Master Cheeks. The biggest problem I see with modern day adaptations is that they always feel like they need to change everything from the source material. I don't mind the idea the directors want to show us their artistic vision, but the issue I mainly have is that these directors feel like they need to change or adjust everything to meet the current audience and expand more people that want to see this. But the issue I have is mainly that most of these directors that take over these, these productions generally have no idea what is the main reason why these characters were written the way that they originally were. So all of a sudden that these characters are now basically changed or altered just over the top to the level that we are just unable to recognize. And once you drift away from what makes these characters unique and different, then all of a sudden you have some sort of a Frankenstein's monster of the character that no one gives a damn about. Now, when The Last of Us was officially announced as going to be an upcoming show for HBO, a lot of people were nervous about what was gonna happen to the dynamic duo that we knew and loved. Most people knew Pedro Pascal from The Mandalorian and they felt as if he was gonna do a great job, but not as many people knew Bella Ramsey and the only thing they saw her from was from Game of Thrones and they didn't really know whether or not she would be good as Ellie. However, when we finally got to see the show itself, these characters were identical to those from the games and honestly, it gave everyone a feeling of just calmness and happy. Joel was brutal, untrusting, and cared about the people he loved and would do anything to protect them. Ellie's that funny, carefree 
kid that has been through a lot of things, but always finds a way to just brighten the mood. Both Pedro and Bella killed it in their roles as Joel and Ellie, and everybody is just ecstatic to see what's going to happen next with the show. Even if the story wasn't exactly the same, the fact that these characters were as close to the lore as possible makes it feel as if any slight adaptions to that weren't really that big of a deal. However, if we look at the opposite side of the spectrum with the Halo TV show, they are the epitome of breaking a character to their core and making them the most unlikable person in the entire show. In the games, the Master Chief is a very much emotionless character that makes all of his feelings known by his actions. And his whole goal is to stick to the mission and protect humanity at all costs. While from the TV show's perspective, we get a character that is showing his emotions constantly, feeling like he's always complaining about something, almost like the level of being a Karen that's about to call Catherine Halsey's manager, where at every single turn, his emotions drive him and cloud his judgment. He gives no damn about humanity or his squad, and is caring more about visions and some random chick that he falls in love with. Like, I didn't know it was possible to have the main character of a TV show be the most unlikable character of the entire production. You think this is funny? In a cosmic sort of way, yes. Well, Mr. Funny Man, is this how you get your sick kicks? What? It's just an ordinary crabby- OH MY GOODNESS! The Last of Us was so successful mainly because it stuck to the characters and what they were from the games. They stayed close enough to a level where the fans of the games are, can actually recognize them for who they are, and even new fans who never heard about the games before can still like them. While the Halo TV show was trying to make Master Chief more likable to a broader audience and boost his moron stats to a level of subhuman, and maybe, just maybe, the audiences would actually appeal to this character. But here's the problem. This character is an abomination and nobody appeals to that. No one just sits there and says, you know what I really want? a cheap ass version of Captain America. Characters are the biggest drivers to any TV show or movie, and if you start out by writing the characters so poorly to the level of unrecognizable and just trash, then the fans of the games are not gonna be on board, and you're just not gonna have anyone that wants to watch the show entirely. You're gonna start off on a bad note that's very difficult to come back from. Next on the docket is the narrative. And the next two stepping into the square circle is going through the Super Mario Bros. movie versus Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City. Now, for most people, they always feel as if the story is definitely the biggest driver to whether or not a show or movie will be successful because it has to have the ability to keep the viewer's attention for the long haul. Most examples from game adaptations have always proven to change or alter their stories because sometimes they can't reach the level of what the games were able to do. However, more recently, a lot of game adaptations have done the unthinkable. They've changed entire stories to be more fitting the current era. Usually when you hear this, it's the equivalent of getting super kicked right in the nuts. Like clockwork, every single film or show that follows follows this method usually becomes a laughing stock of their entire industry. Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City did this pretty badly with this beloved franchise and most fans feel as if they can never recover from this. Now, at the very beginning, when they first announced a new film that would actually mirror the games as close as possible, I mean, after getting roughly five movies that had the Resident Evil series focus on a made-up character that had superpowers and that should have been in the Matrix, I think any semblance of returning back to the lore would have made fans happy. So you would think that no one in their right minds would actually make these bold statements and then turn around and then lie to all those fans and make something that completely sucks ass, right? WRONG! They added characters that were never present in the games and made the existing characters basically liabilities like Leon, who made him look like a damn herb that was getting smacked around for being a rookie. Basically, this movie consists of both Resident Evil 1 and 2's plot, but they butcher basically the main concepts of the narrative and they just destroy any sort of themes that were developed back in the old days. Like, the main plot of the original game was to investigate murders and then you find out what really what's causing all this mayhem while you go through the story. The movie says, screw you, and let's make an entire thing based around an action adventure that has no horror elements whatsoever in it. And then let's just make Leon look like a complete dumbass. Now, obviously, when you look at the rating overall, they gave it basically the rating of complete ass, giving it a 5.2 on IMDb and a 55% on Rotten Tomatoes. Or you might say to yourself, well, Mars, the critics aren't always the final answers to why whether a movie is good or not. The fans voted this to be even worse than what the critics said. It felt like when watching the movie that directors kind of had one vision for the first half and then completely changed it midway through the writing. You can see where there are multiple movies out there that have adjusted the storylines of the games 
enough where it can be different but still hold the central core of what they meant to do. And you can see this evidently with the Super Mario Brothers movie. Now it's clear as day that this film has been a massive success overall, breaking that one billion dollars in the box office. They are also a very much of an enigma. Critics had given it a very low score on its opening weekend. However, the fan vote is in the 90s. And if you watch the film, you can tell that the writers are trying to stay consistent to the games as much as possible, adding in a little bit of variation to make it seem a little bit different than the previous plots that we've seen. They followed the central concepts and themes of what the Super Mario Brothers stories always were about. The inclusion of all the different characters, a basic Mario story from point A to point B. And this led to massive success. So you look at the two different variations of this issue. You look at the Resident Evil example, and you'll see that basically they go into to maximum overdrive. And they try to cover two games with one film and they basically butcher both of them. Then you look at the other side, the Super Mario Bros. movie does a basic Mario Odyssey plot with the remaining time being followed with some backstory. You're telling me that Resident Evil couldn't have done a better job if they slowed down the pacing and maybe focused more on the elements of the story being close to the games? The narrative of these films and TV shows should mirror that of the games, at least close enough where the fans can appeal to it. Mario breaking into cinema with all of his cast of characters is breaking all types of records in the box office, while Resident Evil is only going to break the dumpster with all the DVDs you're gonna have to throw out. The last aspect that most directors fail quite often at is creating a universe that mirrors the lore of the games. And today we have a very special tag team matchup between Cyberpunk Edge Runners and Arcane versus the classic Super Mario Bros. movie of 1993 and Resident Evil, the TV show. One of the biggest issues that most directors have is understanding the atmosphere and what makes them so unique. And most gamers and fans will realize that this is probably the most important aspect of a show or movie because of the fact that this is what they recognize most often. Does this film or show feel like it should be from the games? Most times directors will add towns or locations that may be similar to the game, so that is a nod to them or for tuning in. But even if you don't have those examples, it has to be close enough to where if you're watching this as a gamer saying, oh yeah, I can see this happening in the game. Now you might be thinking, there's no way that someone can screw up something as easy as this. Right. Now, back in the day, one of the most famous bad movies of all time was the original Super Mario Bros. movie from 1993. Now, I'm not talking it's so bad that it's good. I'm talking about it's so bad that it took 30 years for Nintendo to ever trust another director to use Mario as a game adaptation. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Because to be honest, they probably were watching the taste of crap out of their mouth. Now, what made people the most angry about this was that this entire movie was set into a new era of Bizarro Land where it had nothing to do with the story or the world of Mario. Like, I can't even fathom the conversation that the producers had with the heads of Nintendo over their movie pitch. Okay, so we got here a Mario and Luigi. What, what are your names? Mario. Okay, what's your name? Luigi. Luigi, Luigi? No, Luigi Mario. Oh, that's that sounds pretty stupid. And it starts out in Brooklyn. That's a that's a good start. That's a good start. And apparently a uh, a meteorite crashes here 65 million years ago, creating a separate dimension of a place called Dino Matin. I guess we're going the multiverse route with the president Koopa. Ah. And not even the goons that go after Mario or Luigi are even similar to that of the games. Speaking of crap sandwiches. The Resident Evil TV show literally broke all the fans of their entire franchise. The story here follows a world that is closer to Mad Max than what it actually ever was from the Resident Evil games. Now, Netflix basically set up where this show would cover the events after the games had ended, as well as go back into the time when the outbreak first happened. Roughly around 300 million people live in the entire world infested with zombies because of the corporation umbrella. Now, but this whole show smells and tastes like a week old diaper. The only thing that's that's similar to this entire atmosphere is that there is zombies and there's umbrella. The characters, plot, literally everything of the whole world is bland and just feels gross. There's really parts of the show that are about high school drama, the vegan lifestyle, and this. Right. I mostly just read Zootopia porn, so. You what? The, the show is literally the epitome of Netflix taking a dump on my face. Like, I don't think it's that difficult to come up with a world where a side story can be developed during. From the same network, Cyberpunk Edge Runners has shown how literally a game that was broken from launch found a way to take that universe and run with it to make a show super successful 
being ranked one of the best shows of the year, with Adam Smasher being the only character from the games present in this series. Anime brings so much excitement and intrigue to the storyline and just the world of Night City. And literally my boy Giancarlo Esposito made an appearance as a major character too. Now, why does this show work so well? Night City, the themes, the entire universe of this series mirrors that of the games, and it kind of paints a picture where at this time where all this crazy stuff is happening, somewhere in the city or even at a different time, other things from the games are also occurring. They even made it where there are legit locations from the games being remade into the anime series. Even the main plot has a lot of connections to the game. It's the concept of how being the main character, you make many small decisions in your life that can drastically change your entire outlook and what happens. That is the entire theme of the game. As well as Arcane, where each character is diverse and every champion from League of Legends really has their own backstories that make them unique. The whole world, the character design, it's handcrafted and painted and animated so damn well that it really connects you to the games and really gives off the aura that a lot of fans can appeal to. And the fact is, if you go and watch the series as a fan of League of Legends, you can really feel the emotion and connection that it has to the original lore. If a director feels as if they can't match the level of atmosphere or universe that really gets the fans to the table, then they're not gonna ever get anybody from the original games to ever wanna be a part of their new project. They have to realize that what got you to the dance in the first place is the fans. The fans of the games are the ones that are gonna fill your seats. With the recent successes of movies and TV shows like The Last of Us and the Super Mario Bros. movie, it's clear that there is a room for success for game adaptation. Now let's be clear, there are some garbage ass titles that have been dropped in the recent years, which proves to me that directors still can't understand the secret sauce that is needed to make a good game adaptation. And with the announcement of game IPs like God of War, Ghost of Tsushima, Fallout hitting the big screen, the fear is setting in that maybe this curse has not been lifted. The secret formula to break the curse is, to be honest, not that difficult. And I actually outlined this in a previous video talking about what you need to do to avoid these issues. If you follow two of the three major categories, then you will be all set and clear for landing. If you write your characters as close to the games with similar traits, a narrative that is similar to the main plot of the franchise, or meet the standards of putting your story in the universe of the lore, then you will have a major success on your hands. The Last of Us TV show and the Super Mario Bros. movie followed my advice to a T, and you can see the success that they have. And they set the momentum in the right direction. Now, I understand that there may still be some fears in the horizon over these new game IPs hitting cinema, but with the recent success and the global recognition of these stories abroad, I feel as if the curse has finally been lifted. And I truly believe that we're about to hit a new era of game adaptations for many years to come. Thank you everyone for watching. Do you think the game adaptation curse has been broken? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, drop a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you can know when we drop our next video. Check out the link below for our affiliate link for Rogue Energy, and you can get a nice discount by using the code MARSMAN with two Zs. Until next time, this is MARSMAN signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>